next topic is going to be settings. We're going to be talking about the settings inside a meeting and outside and the different ways that you can adjust your meeting to make it how you want it to. Um, so first, we're going to start with Aaron. And wait, wait, what? We're going to Aaron? Yeah, we just <laughs> talked about that. You know, it, it, I've, I've started taking the lead here, so I, I think it's just right that I. Okay. That I All right. Well, let's, let's, you have let's to Aaron sit down do just for one All second. Right. Let we'll him let Aaron have... do it then. Go ahead, Aaron. <laughs> Take the helm. Sir. All right. Let me share my screen here. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're in the web interface now. We're just going to go through some of the settings. Uh, you can get to that by accessing it through the uh, the side here. Uh, and in here, you can set certain settings for meetings uh, in general. So whether you allow long distance numbers, computer mics, uh, maybe it's, it's, you have your own conference call service that you want to use, uh, whether you want to give attendees full access to screen sharing. So me personally, I don't want to have to give access every time somebody needs to, sh to share their screen because I, we're always collaborating. Um, so by default, I just allow people to present their screens when they want to. Um, now, if I was having a much more um, uh, like a webinar, kind of like this, I probably would lock that down. But for the most part, I, I keep that on. Um, the other thing is allowing new attendees to join using the Google Chrome browser rather than the actual web application. So uh, this is something that uh, most of the, the solutions support now is when you click on a GoToMeeting link, it doesn't need to download the app and run the app on the computer, it just launches it directly in the browser. So that's, that's a pretty cool uh, feature. Um, the next section is in terms of the recordings of your meeting, whether you want them automatically transcribed uh, or uh, capturing slides that you're doing within your meetings. And then uh, how you wanna share that content after a meeting. So um, by default, I turn that off uh, because usually I'm curating that content before sharing it out with, with other people. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then if you wanted to add a logo to, uh, to your screen when you're, uh, when you're not sharing it. So uh, those are all pretty cool settings. Uh, the custom backgrounds within GoToMeeting are all handled by a third-party plugin called ChromaCam. So normally this is a paid plugin, but uh, GoToMeeting has some sort of deal with them. So if you have a GoToMeeting license, you automatically get a paid license of ChromaCam. Uh, which offers, you know, the, the screen blurring and changing your backgrounds and doing the newscaster feature, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And then the synchronization of calendars, um, as we discussed earlier, I have the, uh, the GoToMeeting plugin in, in, my, uh, in my Outlook. Now, in terms of inside of a meeting, there's a number of options that are available. And uh, one of the coolest things that has come out recently is the ability to, uh, when you share your screen, there's a, a beta feature right now for including the media sound directly through the meeting. And this has been something that uh, a lot of our clients have struggled with where they're, they have a video that's streaming on their computer that they want to share with all of the attendees. And the audio is just not good because it has to loop through the microphone and back in. Now it streams directly through the app. So it, it's as if they're listening to it directly, which is, which is really wow. cool. Wow. Welcome to everybody else. I'm so glad you guys could join. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what a turd. <laughs> Touche, Bobby. <laughs> um, so I, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm not used to that feature, um, but, uh, you know, they, they have added that in. It's in beta mm -hmm. right now. Uh, the ability to clean your screen when you're sharing it, if you want to uh, clear out the background and some other things, uh, That's or cool. to share. We don't have that in what does it look like? We don't have that. I'm curious about it. Does it black out your screen? Uh, all it does is it just makes everything generic. So it only shows active applications. It doesn't actually like show you the background and everything going on um, with ah. images and stuff like that. So That's Very pretty cool. smart. I like that. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you have the ability to share just applications rather than just the whole screen. You can um, share both of your screens yeah. all together. Uh -huh. mm. uh, as you can see here, I have a, one very large screen and then my, uh, my laptop wow. screen. Don't, you don't have that on Teams. Yeah, don't we have don't have that, have that on play. Teams. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to the rest of the players, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> you touche. <laughs> um, in terms of other settings, I mean, uh, you have the ability to uh, – lock the meeting so you basically uh, uh, moderate who's coming in, uh, copying the meeting link really quickly, inviting people, 
uh, if you wanted to do that. Over here under the attendees, I, I don't have any other attendees right now, so I, I, I can't really show that, but you have the ability to hit the drop down here, give them presentation access, or give them keyboard and mouse control. Mm -hmm. um, so if you wanted to control somebody's screen, you could do that. Uh, you have your chat window here, which allows you to um, uh, chat within the, the, the meeting and you can send it to everybody or to specific people. Mm -hmm. And then the settings within here, viewing which camera you wanna use, which microphone you wanna use, what your speakers are gonna be. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. Hold on one second. Creating a hole in the space-time continuum. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's going to blow. Uh, and if you wanted to turn off the computer audio, a lot of times when I'm doing meetings, I will actually just phone in because um, I feel like the, um, you know, if there is any sort of internet issues, like if I'm at home or somewhere where it's, it's spotty, I prefer calling in with my, uh, my, mm -hmm. my phone so I get a, a better audio signal, yeah. uh, which is pretty cool. Um, there are a whole bunch of other options in here. I'm not going to go into all of them, but I, I would say those are the, the core options within the app mm -hmm. um, that, that, that you would use often. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. I, like, mm. I see a lot of similarities already, but a few differences. Yeah. One, la one last thing. I mean, if you're recording meetings, <laughs> like if you, if you start a recording, once the meeting's over, it basically starts generating the transcript and the, the, the video recording. And there's a whole section within uh, GoToMeeting that allows you to view those recorded sessions. Mm -hmm. um, so you can go in after the fact, go in there, um, download the, the transcript, which is automatically in a uh, Word doc, uh, the MP4 of the, of the video and audio, uh, any notes that you took during the meeting uh, and things like that. So you have the ability to like transcribe during meetings or add, add action items and things like that live inside of the meeting, which is really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All what right. What you got teams? <laughs> what do I got? Let me, let me show you what the other side of Bush league looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited right now, Bobby. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that, that you're seeing right here is just as I start to, to join it for myself as the host, I get these options here. So from here, I can, I can adjust the volume, right, that I'm hearing. I can mute myself. Uh, I can turn on the video and camera and those options for me. I can do whether I want to allow audio phone calls. I can also do like room audio or don't allow those. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just curious, how do, it, it, does room audio only work if you have some sort of integrated uh, uh, room audio solution? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it would have to detect that you have like, um, like see the search, I have to search the room. Gotcha. So that's where, <clears throat> now there's a whole other discussion, but like uh, Microsoft Teams has their own rooms devices like we had talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then uh, what happens is with the uh, mobile devices uh, or laptop devices, it can detect that it's within uh, near field communication of those devices and say, oh, I'm, I'm close to that. Would, would, I, would you want to use the audio from that room um, and, and things like that? So you can kind of help it know that you're in that room joining. So it can cancel the audio. It knows so it doesn't create a reverb and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's very smart about that. Um, so I'm going to do uh, computer audio, and I'm going to go ahead and hit join. <clears throat> now, I turned on the video, so it's, it's going to get mad because the video is not working. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, a lot of the settings that you're going to do, they're all up here for you, as well as with this, this drop down. So the first thing right here, we're show participants. So when I click on this, this is going to reveal who's participating in the meeting. Uh, I had in this meeting already had sent the invite to Kaylee so I could be like, hey, you're not here yet. It'll send, it's actually calling Where her. Where are you at? <laughs> it's actually calling her. It's like, I'm you're right here. Stop right calling. Now. <laughs> I'm right so here. It's actually placing a call inside Teams, which is pretty cool. That's, that's kind of a feature. You can't really have that in GoToMeeting because this is kind of the benefit of having a system that's integrated as one piece because you're working with the company. But that's, that's a really nice benefit of having it because everybody who's in the organization has teams. And so you can do things like that. 
Um, I can also, like he did, copy the, the information and join it. We already talked about that. I can, um, I can put somebody in here. Uh, let me see here. Uh, now, if I hit A, notice it's not going to bring up Aaron because it, he's not in my organization. So the search option is only going to be people in your – really, if you're wanting to invite other people that haven't already been set up in the meeting, the best way is just to copy this by clicking this. So what it did is it copied the invitation information in there, and then you can paste it in whatever Outlook, Chrome, whatever you want to use for your email, um, and just paste it in there. And send. And then, then you've got all of your autocompletes for the different people you have that you've emailed over time. The autocompletes are not here because they're not allowed. The only thing that's going to do the search here is what's in your global address list right. for your internal organization, not anyone right. outside your organization. So that's what shows up here. Now, <clears throat> up here under the top of the participants, you think it would be uh, a little bit easier to find, but this is where you can go ahead and do those settings where you can manage the permissions. So this gets back to kind of what you were talking about, which I think was a little bit more intuitive how you're looking at as you're going to set it up. Because I think go to meetings concept is it's thinking, okay, most everybody's going to be a guest or potentially a guest. So let me go ahead and, and give you all these settings right in your face because you're probably going to need to play with these. Whereas right. Team's perspective, I believe their thought is everybody's that you're probably going to be doing these meetings on average is going to be inside your organization. And a lot of these settings you probably don't need to see all the time. So we just put it here for you to do that more from a guest perspective. But under Which here, makes I, sense. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so in here, when I click that, what it's doing is it's bringing up a web browser that has this information for this meeting. So and in here, I can say who can bypass this lobby. And by default, and don't think guest is guest people that are joining. That is not what this guest is. This is so confusing. Microsoft needs to change this nomenclature. Guests are people that have been invited to your team's channel that you've already approved to join. So that that, that's interesting because uh, in GoToMeeting, I can lock or unlock the meeting. Right. It's one or the other. So this does give you a little bit more granularity on, hey, if I know who they are, let them in, but otherwise wait for me to allow them in. Correct. Yeah. So you could say everyone, only me. So that way, even if they are in the organization, I'm going to be the, the person that's going to be allowing. I think this is really nice if you know that you're going to have some people that are going to possibly join the, the meeting early and you want to have some pre-game yeah. conversation and be able to control who can hear it. That's a good choice. I'm not a fan of the, like, why couldn't they just put this in the app? You know? I agree. It, it, I'm yeah. sure it will be. And, and then to, to kind of finish up some of these things that we have here, uh, these are for your audio conference calling. So inside Microsoft Teams, by default, you don't have the ability for people to call in. So you may notice on some of the other slides that and, and video snippets where I was doing the sharing, I do have a phone number on my Teams and other information. That's a conferencing license that you have to pay for. It's $2 per user that's going to utilize that. It's not $2 for everybody who can call in. It's just who's going to be hosting it is the $2. But because so I have that, I get these options here. What's that? So Teams does not include the basic conference calling features in the license, et cetera. It yeah. Interesting. Well, okay. But you're not paying for it. So they're, in their mind, if you're going to be doing the voice piece, you're… You know. Yeah. A lot of times I'll be having a… Uh, conference call with a customer where I want to provide a, a conference bridge number, mm -hmm. I actually use GoToMeeting for that and just use the, the phone capabilities rather than, uh, you know, showing my video and audio and things like that. So whether somebody's joining via the computer or their phone, uh, like the app on their phone or calling in, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. and, and it is that way in Teams too. Sometimes I've used Teams that way um, that I haven't done it. What's nice about that is I can use the Teams app on my phone and I don't have to actually dial the number and go through that process. I can just open right. the app on my phone and just say join. Uh, and but then anyone your, else that's your called Your participants in, would call in. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So now also interestingly enough, the participants, if they have their own Teams app on their phone, they wouldn't even necessarily have to call in too. They could mm. just join it just like they would if they were joining one of their already organizations because they're already utilizing Teams, they can just hit join, mm -hmm. um, which is a nice feature. Mm -hmm. All right, so the rest of these options, uh, 
we can, you know, who can present. This is where I could go in here and I could say only me. So if I pick this, what's going to happen is anyone who joins will not be a presenter. They will show up as an attendee. So there are two different columns here. Um, and you, if you see right here, see how under this, everything is kind of separate. Like mm -hmm. I'm up here and Kaylee's down here. This would be called attendees and they would just start stacking up down here. And then they couldn't do things like talk or present or anything. I could right click on them and make them presenters and then they would kick up to the top here and then she could start or he or she, whoever that is, could start doing it. So the last option here is allow attendees to unmute. So in here, what happens is see how this icon is, is white. And then if, if I were to mute myself here and I hit this, see how it has a little, it's kind of out. It's no longer filled in, but it yeah. has the slash through it. Then what it goes to is it goes to a darker color and it indicates they cannot unmute themselves even if they wanted mm. to. Mm -hmm. And then I can come under here and I can just say, okay, uh, don't allow attendees to unmute themselves. Uh, so I can, I can change this on the fly right here, which is yeah. nice. I don't have to go to the web browser in the... Now, earlier you mentioned that um, Teams in the browser looks pretty much the same as this, right? Oh, no, they added it here now. Look at that. <gasps> they just added oh. it. Oh, look at that. Uh-oh. It's under here. Click on that. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So now you can it do is. it here on the fly. Oh, my goodness. All the and same I just right said there. this in our so, previous video. I said, don't so that, uh, change it. Click on it. Click on yeah, it. Yeah, it, it, goes, it goes back to the web browser. Well, why does that one still do the same thing? <laughs> I don't know. Why not bring up the other teams? Yeah, I, I think teams. we need to ask. <laughs> yeah. Bill, can you help me out here, buddy? What, Bill, what other please options are Bobby, what other options are in that drop down there? That new drop down. It's uh, the here? Same. Okay, yeah. So the, now there's some more options in here which uh, I was what? I was I'm gonna get through too. So <clears throat> meeting notes is kinda nice. You can make some you can make some notes based on the meetings if you click on that. It, it kinda creates this over here where you can kinda take notes and if you click on this, mm -hmm. it kinda starts this little session here. Um, and then based on the security is who can see or have access to those notes. Mm -hmm. So here it's kicking me to this other page here where I can start taking notes from it there. Okay, so that's pretty similar. Mm -hmm. um, and then from down here, uh, <laughs> that's where that meeting options is. <laughs> yes. Uh, under device settings in this top list here. So that's kind of goes back to it's showing you how you can get to the previous when you were first coming in where you could change audio and some other settings. This is where you can do that. So when the person's like this, this is where you go I, to fix that. You know, <laughs> I, I feel like that's a common um, issue that people's ha people have that uh, when they connect to meetings, a lot of time their default audio device or whatever is not set up. And it takes them a minute to get figure out, okay, I need to go into here and, and change that yeah. setting. Right. Um, yeah, so like when I go to, let me leave and join again. So when I go back in here, as you see, it, they're, they're trying their best to help you out by saying, yeah, that's hey, right there. you know, please cut it all up. But it's not, it's still kind of hidden. I have to go here, see that? To, it shows you what it is, but it's, it doesn't like list it like right in your face. I think GoToMeeting does, it presents like, here's the ones we're going to pick right here. It's a, it's a drop down pick list versus a, a a button hover like over yeah. yeah yeah it's just i mean now if i click that now it presents now me it where lists I can it pick out them. and sometimes it gets it wrong you know it's picking the wrong camera it's picking what option you have here. well i think a lot of times it's what is the last audio device you used on your computer right. and, and with how many different ways we're connecting with people nowadays i mean it's just exactly. constantly changing yeah, yeah. And then uh, from here, this is where it gets interesting. So this kind of gets into the, the backgrounds and the settings. Now, if there are more people that were joined in this meeting, I can do like together mode. So I don't know if you're into the NBA or sports, but <laughs> all of the NBA, you know, where those people were joining and you had those, they look like chairs that people were in in the video conference. And they were all like, just, it would just put them in the chair, their head. And it made it look like they were all sitting in, in the stadium seating. Did you ever That is that? really cool. Yeah. So yeah. That's another, is this another feature where it's like, this has been here forever and I'm just learning about it? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to give a plus one to Teams on that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and I think, I mean, at the end of the day, I think all of the, the products are going to end up having very similar features like we've already seen. But right. obviously the different uh, uh, companies have decided what's more important, you know, that's, to release yes. first. That's a great yep. point. Yeah. 
So uh, then I have options like, you know, apply background here. So maybe when I was joining the session, I don't have the, I didn't pick it, but now I decided I wanted to do that. That's where I can do that at. I can turn on live captions. Well, so go back to that because that's really important. Best guess. That's really important because oh, okay. he didn't have that integrated into his application. So go to meeting, used a third a plug party in. plugin. Yep. Um, so this is actually integrated right. into Teams, and you can add your own backgrounds as well, um, like how Bobby has Bob Ross as his background usually in meetings. <laughs> <laughs> My personal favorite. <laughs> Love it. Right. Yeah, that's one of the things I really wish GoToMeeting did something about. I mean, using the third-party plugin, it works fine, um, but – you know, not having it directly in built in it, you have to choose that plugin as your camera and then it, it modifies it from there. Um, mm -hmm. I think that plugin is a very popular one, not just with GoToMeeting, but with other services. Yeah. So it's widely used, but uh, you know, having it built in here is, is definitely uh, easier. Yeah. User friendly. So that's pretty much most of the meeting options here. The turn on live captions, it, it tries to its best to, to get. It, try, it tries yeah, its best. <laughs> it tries its best to pick up what you're saying and then and putting it in a, in a caption format. Mm -hmm. And then you can hit start recording. You can do the dial pad. And you can actually, which is a nice feature, turn off your incoming video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very similar to the go to meeting option for just hiding everybody. I think that it's really interesting, just like how Aaron said previously about the core values of Teams and GoToMeeting, you can tell are different, mm -hmm. but there's so many features that are similar um, and you get the same thing and you mm -hmm. get your point across the same way, but you can really tell that the way that they were going with their um, main use of their product was very different. List two things, and I'll do the same. So mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, live and die by the sword. List really put me on the spot here, Bobby. Yeah. I know. Uh, list two things that you liked about Teams that you wish that uh, GoToMeeting had. Sure. And I'll let you think about it because I have some. I don't even I need want. to think about it. I oh, mean, okay. out the gate, Go it's going to be the, so the integration of the backgrounds. I mean, I. Okay. they both support it, but having it within the application is just seems a lot easier. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So that's definitely one thing. Um, the other thing would just be the, the ease of connecting to people within your organization. Uh, uh, like yeah. we discussed earlier, yes, go to meeting teams and all these other uh, applications, they support single sign on with your organization, but in go to meeting, I can't just like click on somebody's name and connect with them, you know? Right. So in that regard, uh, teams, definitely has a leg up for me. And, and like I said uh, before, I'm going to use both of the platforms. And I think that's important for everybody to, to, to be flexible with not just sticking themselves into one box. I mean, there's, there's different reasons why you should use one versus the other. I'd have to say two of the things that I liked. Number one, I really loved, and this may seem insignificant to you, but I think it's really a kind of a big deal about how you can like hide sort of the desktop that, totally that check, agree. The clean that, desktop. Yeah, that clean yeah. desktop was a cool idea. I, I'm like, ooh, I really wish that was that was available inside Teams. That that would be. That saves a lot of my of editing a, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it's cool, especially if you have like a personal desktop background that you really don't want people right. to see, or you've yes. got other applications up, things like that. It it makes sure that um, they're only seeing what you want to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, and I also feel like it that go to meeting it has some of the features and settings more in your face uh, yeah. to make the ability for collaboration and limitation of that collaboration a little easier mm -hmm. uh, i know that go to meeting senses that they have uh, you know an edge there and i know that teams feels like they have a bit of a disadvantage and that's why they're trying mm -hmm. to do that and it's interesting how I, I know both companies are looking at their weak spots and how they can try to adjust it as rapidly as they can in this market mm -hmm. where everybody's doing so many um, meetings and utilizing their products. Each of those right. individual respective companies have grown in leaps and bounds in market share, not really market share, but in, mar in utilization of their products because of yeah. the current environment. Right. I, I really 
do wish that I could right click on my team's icon and like yes. schedule a meeting right there. I would, I would love to be able to right click and see all of the team's meetings that are going to happen in the next two weeks or week right. time frame mm -hmm. and just have them all in one spot because there's so many times where I'm like, okay, when is that meeting that I have? And I have to like scroll through all Great of point. my calendar looking for that. And mm -hmm. it might be a 15 minute meeting, right? So it may not be very large <laughs> for me to see <laughs> That's and right. I'll just yeah. miss it. You know, we're having just a comprehensive list would be super helpful. And the other thing is go to meeting will never be able to take over exactly what teams can do. Mm -hmm. because it's a completely different product but right. teams can definitely encroach very severely on go to meetings capabilities because right. of the fact that you know they're just completely coming from different planets right mm -hmm. and so it's that difficult line that microsoft has to walk between being in the big bad monopoly guy who's crushing <laughs> yeah. the competition right mm -hmm. uh to also providing the level of support that the users want to have. I mean, as a person who has lives and, and breathes in teams, the more features they have, I'm like, keep them coming. You know, yeah. Yeah. I'm not really thinking about a monopoly. I'm thinking about just keep giving me options that I right. really love to use. So true. Um, but that's not how they have to think about it. They've got to think about, they don't want to be called in front of Congress because it's happened before. <laughs> yes. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I want to say a special thanks to yes. um, our friend Aaron for coming on here and doing this with us. Thank you so much, Aaron. Um, thanks for, for inviting coming. me. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us because we could not do this literally without you. We have no idea anything about GoToMeeting. So thank you for coming on here and thank you for sharing um, all that you have to offer with GoToMeeting. Um, and we hope that you guys um, have a little bit of an understanding of all the different applications that are out there. I know that we share Teams with you all the time, but there are different options and we want you to be able to feel comfortable to use different ones and things that fit the way um, of life that you are in and your um, meeting styles and stuff like that, which is super cool that we have the opportunity to do that. So we hope you guys enjoyed and please comment down below um, who you think won this um, team's first <laughs> go-to meeting battle. Oh no. Um, and also, um, if you guys have ever used GoToMeeting or if you guys have used GoToMeeting and not Teams, let us know. We're very curious. And if you have any questions or anything like that, comment down below. We'd love to hear it. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Hey, thanks so much for watching our video. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to our channel for more content. Bye.